listening to the Luna Podcast. You can now find us on Patreon at the Luna Pod, where you can show your support for the podcast for only $1 a month. Or for a little bit more, you can get early access and bonus episodes, contribute to our podcast segments, and receive exclusive video content as we film our reactions, reviews, and discover new K-pop groups. Head over to Patreon now to join the community. We can't wait to chat with you. Hype Boy was super big in the K-pop community because of that whole meme that was going around with the like, where you'd ask someone who had their earphones in, like, what are you listening to? And then they'd say a song and it was like, New Jeans Hype Boy. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like if something's trending in the K-pop community, it probably came from New Jeans. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Luna Pod, where we talk all things K-pop. I'm Brooke. And I'm Brickell. This is our third group chat, but our first for a girl group. And this one is going to be about new jeans. This episode includes everything you might need to know if you're wanting to become a bunny. We put a lot of time and research into group chats, but with so much information out there, it's impossible to list everything. So we've gathered our findings and personal opinions as best as we could. So we hope you learned something new, enjoy, and decide to become bunnies with us. I love bunnies. That's so cute. It is really cute. <laughs> so let's talk about us and our personal ranking with new jeans, I guess you could say. I would say they're definitely in my top 10 girl groups, but mm -hmm. probably even my top five. Because I was thinking the same. It's hard yeah. for us because we're definitely more boy group stands. I've had like a big moment with girl groups whenever I was first getting into K-pop. So it's kind of hard for me to decipher like where exactly they lie, but they're definitely higher now. Yep. Agreed. And <laughs> we were talking about this the other day because girl groups kind of throw me through a loop. Like, mm -hmm. because they are like they're still K-pop, obviously, but I feel like it's an entire different ranking system when it comes to yeah. girl groups. And like, we were even talking about like the types of biases episode that we did. We might have to do a part two for girl groups only because I was, I've been trying to come up yeah. with biases for these girl groups as we're doing these group chats. And mm. I'm like, I don't know because my feelings for like my quote bias in my girl groups is completely different for the reasons that I have my boy group biases. Yeah. So I'm like, what do we do? But for New Jeans specifically, I think I can say that Minji is my bias. Okay. But Danielle and Heron, I guess I could technically call like records because they're just piquing my interest a lot. At this moment, I don't think I could necessarily pinpoint one bias. I kind of just have like a biased line at the moment and I'm like in the works of narrowing it down. So my bias line would be Hani, Minji, and Heron and whoever doesn't make bias will be my record yeah. yeah well again it's just so different than boy groups i feel like it's yeah. so interesting that's what, like with minji specifically i was like thinking about it because i was watching a bunch of like tiktoks and i just felt very drawn to her but almost like in a little sister way yeah. like and i don't know how to explain that because i this is my first time experiencing it so i'm like i don't really know what this is right now but like <laughs> we're gonna go with it and we both got into new jeans at their debut yeah it was attention. very recent and like, honestly, I feel like one of the things that stood out to me the most about New Jeans is that they felt extremely professional. Like they were just very on top of the game from their debut. And I just really love the youthful vibe that they had with attention and the music video. Everything about the concept was very nostalgic and like Y2K is their mm -hmm. thing. And it was just very interesting because it felt nostalgic, but somehow very new, which makes a lot of sense for like their brand and their name. Yeah. So let's dive deeper into the group themselves. How did they form? New Jeans is a five member group from Adore Music, which is actually under HYBE. So it's the only group under that management, but it's not the first girl group under HYBE though. I think From Us yeah. Nine was their first technical girl group. I could be very wrong on that, apologies. But I feel like the fact that they were, even though it is Adore Music, the fact that they're under HYBE, they had a lot of hype right off the bat. Also shows why they're so professional like, mature feeling for such a young group just age wise and the fact they like just debuted yeah exactly i know that there was a lot of talk about this online at the moment like when they first started debut and they were like oh hype's pouring all of their money into new jeans now that bts is gone and it was kind of like people were a little bit upset about it i'm like you guys this is a completely different group i'm like they're yeah. not doing that and it's like bts is going you know on their enlistment right now like it makes sense for them to be like putting their budget towards another group yeah yeah so i'm like i don't know there was some drama about that but that's how the internet rolls Though they're the only group as of right now under a door, they are working on a boy group. They held auditions. I don't know if it, they already passed. I think they did. I think so. They were looking for people born between 2004, which already blows my mind. That's wild. To 2012. I don't even know what that means. 2012 was last year. What are people talking about? You're, you're <laughs> on babies? What are they? They're 11? Oh. Right? Is that right math? 
Oh, plus ten. Yeah, plus one. they're like whoa. That's whoa. literally insane. Oh my gosh. But I mean, I guess they like train for like two years or something. I don't know. But still, that's right? very yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Regardless, like intrigued to see what's gonna happen with this. Yeah. And just kind of the meaning behind the name New Jeans, because, you know, a weird name. Yeah, catchy, but yeah. interesting. So basically, jeans is a timeless garment, and each generation has a symbolic new style of jeans. So they're following the same ambition of being a strong figure of this generation's pop culture, which is so, that's such it's, a unique concept. It is, because it's like, jeans are timeless. Like, it's yeah. something that's always been around, you always wear it with anything, like, and it's like, if you're relating jeans to K-pop, like, it's like, they're, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, does that make sense? Because, like, there's always different kinds of, like, style of jeans, whether it's, like, skinny jeans was very much a thing. Low cut, high cut. Baggy yeah. jeans. Baggy jeans. Like, knee slits, just, like, all those kind of things. Yeah. So, like, it's still the same thing, but something new and fresh. And so, like, that's what they are. Yeah. It also sounds like new genes, like... Genetics. Yeah, genetics genes. And they want to just usher a new era in pop music. And I think they've done an incredible job just in the one year. Yeah. No, it's incredible. Well, and I love when you were first telling me about, like, you found out the meaning of new genes, too. And I was just so, like, in awe of, like, a new style of a timeless thing. Like, it's just... That is so perfect for a k-pop group like that mm -hmm. was just a plus to that company with for coming up yeah. with that yeah <laughs> their pre-debut video for attention released july 22nd of 2022 which love because that's our 222 numbers but they officially debuted august 1st of 2022 with new jeans the first ep and their fandom name as we've said earlier is bunnies that's so adorable. It is so cute. And like the branding you can have with bunnies, it's precious. Yeah. They have that iconic bunny logo everywhere and it is literally just the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. And to further the cuteness with a bunny, their light stick is called a binky bong. And it's just <laughs> so like, cute. it's in the shape of a U, but it's like a little bunny head with little eyes. And you can add, honestly, like think of little croc giblets. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Them? Giblets? I don't know. The croc. little croc inserts. Think of that before a light stick, you can stick their names on the eyes. Like yeah. Just like Minji or Hani. It's really cute. And it's adorable. Because like I know Minji, for example, she draws eyebrows on her binky bong all the time. Mm -hmm. She's like, she's not going out without eyebrows. And I'm like, that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, this is so crazy to me. They got their light sticks nine months after debuting. That is so Which, fast. Like I looked into it and most groups don't get it until like at least a year, maybe a year and a half. Especially like a full blown one that isn't like the single panel. Exactly. Yeah. And like even for big groups that's just like wild and so the overall vibe of the group i would say is just a very refreshing youthful like y2k like year two like 2000s and their music reflects that with being early 2000s or 90s like pop a little bit of r&b in there as well and i'd say what they're known for is their overall aesthetic especially with their style they have those bunny hats and like teddy bear book bags and this is something really interesting that we learned they're also known for their hair they're known for having long natural hair mm -hmm. which is very cool because danielle actually has very naturally curly hair so you get yeah. to see that a lot too so before getting into post debut let's talk about the girls so we have Kim Minji, Hani Pham, Danielle Marsh, Kang Heron, and Lee Hayen. And once again, like we did with TXT, we have to just discuss some of these English names because they are so pretty. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you have like Danielle. That's very English yeah. anyway. And then Hani, that's, that could be very English. Like it almost sounds like Hannah or mm -hmm. like something like that. So it, you know, that makes sense. So Minji's is Isabel, Heron's is Vanessa, and Hayen is Grace so pretty yeah like we said like, and it's just interesting because those aren't at least around here those aren't names that you hear a whole lot yeah now let's jump into the members individually starting with minji she was born may 7th 2004 which is wild to me <laughs> <laughs> but that makes her 19 years old at the time of this recording she is a taurus and like we've done in previous group chats we are going to do their blood type along with their astrology sign because astrology to us is like blood type to them so she is a blood type a and her representative emoji is a bear so how Minji joined the company and became an idol, she was learning guitar at her school. And then the head of the Institute was like, hey, you're really good. You should attend Source Music's auditions. Not Camp Rock. Hey, you're, you're really, really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Since the auditions were being held at her school, she tried it out and she ended up passing. And then she spent two years as a trainee. Visual wise, Minji has very natural hair as their group is known for. 
It's usually black, and then she kind of has a tomboyish look to her. We do need to talk about this because New Jeans was so hard for me to like learn their names and put their names to faces. Like I remember I was literally going through them and still to this day, I like look at them and I'll be like, wait, is it this member or this member? I don't mm -hmm. know why they are so difficult, but for some reason they are very hard to distinguish. So we're gonna try our best in this episode to give you like points to try and like distinguish the members. Yeah, for Minji, I would say kind of like maybe focus on like more of like a tomboyish look and focus a lot on her eyebrows. Her position in the group, now New Jeans is kind of interesting and they don't really have like set positions, but she raps and then she is also the suspected leader. Yeah, she like, even though they don't have a set leader, like it's not fully given to her, she does play that role and she's essentially the leader. A nickname that you might hear if you're getting into New Jeans for Minji is Minky, which I feel like you hear that a lot when they have like a G or a G at the end, yeah. they turn it into a K, it's very cute. Personality wise, she is very mother-like with the girls. She has very sarcastic and a dry sense of humor, but she's also like very mature and well-spoken. And I feel like I relate to her a lot in that sense because she can be very blunt and like that can come off as harsh, but it's kind of like her way of showing affection. Like they, just like whenever I was watching the MBTI video, I just related a lot to her. Performance wise, she did help write Ditto, which is very, very cool. Cause again, as such a young new group, them having mm -hmm. like a say and like helping in writing some of these things, it's very, very cool. And just some fun facts about Minji. She has an older brother and a younger sister. She also spent some time in Canada and speaks English very well. She's also very strong. I don't like know how to explain this very well, but she can like deadlift a majority of the members. And like in some <laughs> angles, you'll just see like, she's got some muscle on her arms and I'm like, good for you, girl, get it. And as we kind of said, when she joined the company, she was formerly under Source Music as a trainee, which is also the same company that La Seraphim is under, which is a part of Hybe. She was also in an acting class with Sillyun from Enmix and they performed together. And she also had an appearance in Permission to Dance during the music video. Which is crazy. It's so cool. I mean, how old was she? she at that time oh uh, crap when did that come out the year before maybe yeah that's so really cool she's still her. pretty young she's also an ambassador for chanel korea which again being so young and new to the industry mm -hmm. already being an ambassador they all have such like just cool opportunities for every member like they've really like marketed themselves very well most groups are a part of different apps where you can interact with fans and new jeans has their own app called phoning in the design of the app, it's very retro 90s themed, which makes a lot of sense for the group. And so it's really cool for them to have their own unique app to interact with fans based off of them, basically. Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like most groups, they're like a part of a different app, like in multiple yeah. groups are a part of it. So it's cool that they have their own thing. And overall, like the app has different folders where fans can create like an ID card, play dress up with members, which I tried. I don't know if I'm clicking on the wrong stuff, but they updated the app, but I could not. And I really wanted to, and I was like <laughs> upset by it. Whenever, apparently whenever you do like make an ID, you can choose different like activities. Depending on what activity you choose determines like the member or club that's on your ID card. And each member has their own different club. And so Minji's is the journaling club. That's adorable. <laughs> Cause I know that's one of her hobbies is like redecorating yeah. her journal. And her yeah, it's like, it's really cool how the app like caters to them as well. It's like very themed. It has like this call button to where if you click on it, it'll have like either voice recordings or like video recordings of them talking. And like, it even has like the hang up button. So if you're like, you can be in the middle of the video and click the hang up button and it stops the call and it says call ended. Oh, that's so And it cool. looks like in the log of your calls or your missed calls, it's been listened to. And they have different like photo albums for each member. So it is like other apps that you do have to like pay for some of the inclusions, but it's so unique. It's so interactive too. Like that's so fun, like for the fandom. Another one of her hobbies, other than decorating her diary, is also reading. She also has a habit of reacting in English. So like we said before, she is pretty solid in speaking English, but it's just hilarious because a lot of her reactions will be English, which is very relatable because I feel like when you're learning Korean, like on the flip side of that, we'll have the same thing. We're like- I feel like most times whenever you consume certain content, like whether it's a show or music in a different language, you just naturally pick up different stuff. Like I used to watch a Norwegian show and I would pick up their sayings all all the time. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I pick up our slang too all the time. So it yeah. makes sense that like whatever you are consuming at the moment, you're going to like start saying. <laughs> and there's a time where like the members would just ask like different activities that they want to do with the others. And she said she wanted to have like a pajama party, go camping and have like a cooking show with the girls. It's so That's cute. so sweet. Next member is Hani. She was born October 6, 2004. So she is currently 18. At time of recording, she's a Libra and her blood type is O. And her representative emoji is a bunny. 
Which is just cute because it's also like the fandom. Yeah, that's really adorable. She auditioned and passed the global auditions in October 2019 and trained for 2.5 years after that. And visual wise, in my head it helped, but whenever I was telling you, I feel like it, it didn't. didn't. No. <laughs> I would just say she's like, well, she's the shortest one. Yeah. If you're seeing them all together, yeah. that's easy. But I would just say like smallest one, just very baby face, which again, like they're all young. So I feel like that's kind of prevalent Unless everyone, you're thinking yeah. of it in the way that I am, that might not be the most well, helpful. And it might be that she has like a little bit fuller cheeks. Yeah. Like that, maybe. Like I just feel like everything about her face is just really small. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I need it too. So for her position, she is vocalist. For her personality, she's definitely more out there and extroverted. She has, she loves to have like just a lot of fun with the girls and pick around with them. I love her and Minji's dynamic so much. I feel like anytime you watch a video of theirs, her face is just very emotive. Like yeah. her reactions to absolutely everything is hilarious. And she's just really sweet. They recently did Lollapalooza and she ended up writing like this really, really long, like five page little letter. <laughs> to bunnies as a thank you. It was really sweet. And overall, I would say she's very charismatic. I've watched a few of their vlogs. She just feels so normal. Like just like if fans were to do a vlog or like just like normal everyday people were doing a vlog, that's how it felt. Like everything she was doing, she was very excited about it. And as a performer, similar, I feel like all the girls have helped a lot with music, writing music, which is really cool. She helped write Hype Boy and OMG iconic and she just has really great vocals and just a very stable voice and i think she has amazing stage presence she like, really does really one to watch like whether or not she's your bias you're kind of drawn to her yeah which i feel like new jeans in general has an incredible stage presence but yeah mm -hmm. honey is definitely like an eye magnet now she is vietnamese australian she was born in melbourne australia and she is the first vietnamese idol under hybe so cool and so she speaks english korean and vietnamese and some random fun facts about her. She has a younger sister and she can play the ukulele. I wish. I know. That's like the cutest instrument you could possibly like learn to play. I'm saying cute a lot, but New Jeans is literally just the cutest. What so else like, could you say? Yeah. Like I want to learn how to play the ukulele so bad. Like I have my grandpa's, but I never play it. Just kind of an aesthetic. So, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of there. And it's hard. I mean, anything's hard for me, like instrument wise. Same. But like, I just can't. My fingers don't know how to do that. And on the phoning app, she is a member of the baking club. And she has this habit of holding in her laughter, which just ends up making like the weirdest sound. <laughs> like I feel like anytime you hold in anything, yeah. it just comes out somehow worse no, than what you true. were expecting. <laughs> so that just like happened a lot to her. And she was a One Direction fan <gasps> with Niall as her favorite member. Like, yes, ma'am, same. That, is that was literally me. Yeah, that's so <laughs> cute. I'm telling you, roots go back to One Direction. <laughs> She's just one of us. Her One Direction <laughs> bias, Niall. And she ended up getting into K-pop in 2013 through Famous Reaction Channel, which is really that's cool. So I feel fun. like that's how like a lot of us get into K-pop. Yeah. And she was once on The Voice Kids. That is literally so cool. Like, <laughs> I used to watch The Voice Kids all the time. Like, when I was a kid, yeah. I was like, you know, that's just amazing. And she used to be part of the Australian K-pop dance cover group called Amina. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce that. Amina Dance Crew. And she, similar to Minji, appeared on the Permission to Dance music video. And fans just kept calling her Cherry since nobody knew her name at the time. They just like called her Cherry. Interesting. Huh. I want to like look this up deeper now. I know. I, I want to. We need to like rewatch watch it. Dance, yeah. And for other hobbies, she likes to go on walks at night for the cool atmosphere and temperature, which is very relatable. Like there's something different about a night walk. Just that crisp air. <laughs> yes. And she is an ambassador for Gucci, which happened not even three months into their debut. Again, that's just crazy. Like the immediate brand deals and the media league ambassadorships, insane. Yeah. And she's also ambassador for Armani Beauty and attended the Gucci Fall 2023 show during the Milan Fashion Week. So that means she was literally 18 years old when she was doing that. That's so wild. The next member is going to be Danielle. She was born April 11th, 2005, which means she's also 18 at the time of recording. She is an Aries, a blood type AB, and her representative emoji is a puppy, which I feel like is very, very fitting for her. Danielle joined the company through the Plus Global auditions, and you will hear a couple of nicknames for Danielle, including Danny and Sunflower. Sunflower fits her so well. Yeah, like she's quite literally like the sunflower of the group. Like she's got a very addictive personality. You're just naturally drawn to her. Very sunny, happy. It's just like impossible to dislike this girl. I agree. Performance wise, she helped write attention and she also has very good stage presence. She's very captivating. And I feel like she just always has the biggest smile on her face. 
which is something you can look for if you're trying to pinpoint her in the group. She also has a very like European look, but not because she's Australian. It's just like her features are just a little more Western, I guess you could say. She just has really strong visuals overall. Like think 17's Vernon, but female. Honestly, that's like spot on. Like, I don't yeah. know. I just constantly think that. Yeah, no, it makes so much sense. Uh, and another thing that you can use to kind of pick her out of the group is that she usually has curly hair. Some fun facts about Daniela is that she is Korean Australian. She was born in South Korea. Her dad is Australian and her mom is Korean. She also has an older sister and her surname is Mo, which is apparently very rare in Korea. Like only 20,000 people have that. So it makes her part of the Hampyong Mo clan. Which that is like such an interesting fact. I feel like you don't hear much about like I mean, sometimes on occasion you'll hear like, oh, this idol's a part of this clan or blah, blah, yeah. for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And like for it to be because it's a rare one. It's, it's so cool. cool. She also appeared on Rainbow Kindergarten, Jessie's Play Kitchen, My Heart's Crayon, and was a kid's model. She just had such a different life than me. Yes. Well, and <laughs> like, she like just had such just, a media presence even as yeah, a kid. Like the craziest childhood. Like that's just so cool. Daniels also said that she wants to start a surfing club with Hani since she loves surfing. Which is very fitting because she is part of the surfing club on the phoning app. And she has loved swimming and has been swimming since she was very young. She said that if she had to listen to one K-pop song for the rest of her life, she'd choose I Use Through the Night. She's also said that if she were to shoot an ad, she'd like to do a sunglasses ad. So we'll sit back and wait for that brand deal. But she is currently an ambassador for Burberry and Yves Saint Laurent Beauty. She was also the voice for Ariel in the Korean dubbed 2023 Little Mermaid and did a performance video for Part of Your World that was released by Disney Korea that was teasing the upcoming movie. Which we need to watch that. That's really cool. Yeah, that is really cool. And again, working with Disney Korea Mm -hmm. this early on. The next member is Heyrin. She was born May 15th, 2006, making her 17 at the time of recording. She is a Taurus and her blood type is B. And representative emoji is a hamster, but also, I'm so sorry, it's a cat. Yeah, you're telling me she's not a cat emoji. You're wrong. When no. I know she has, like, stated multiple times, too. She's like, I'm not a cat. And I'm like, honey, <laughs> you're a cat. Yeah. <laughs> her journey into becoming an idol is absolutely crazy. So she was just very well known for her visuals within school. Like school and was recognized for that and was scouted multiple times like basically street casted and fellow classmates just thought she ended up moving at some point because she was like mia no she dropped out and like became an idol (laughs) it's so funny (laughs) that is hilarious visual wise like we said very cat like yes like if you think cat you'll know who she is and if you're familiar with and hypen's member jungwon they honestly have the exact same eyes. That is what helps me pick her out mm-hmm. a lot is the, ju- like thinking of Jungwon's eyes. Yeah, that was like the first thing I picked up on. I'm like, okay, I'm sticking with that. That is how I know it's her. And she does not have a set position. And some of her nicknames you'll hear are Kan Kitty, which- Again, just, you're telling me she's not a cat. <laughs> yeah, continuing the cat agenda and Rin, which is really cute. Yeah, that is very, very cute. And for her personality, she's very quiet, reserved, and calm but has opened up a lot to the other members, especially more recently, like they've even said it like, oh, you've opened up a lot more. And even whenever they say that, she becomes like so shy and like, "Uh." (laughs) and she has a lot of younger sibling energy with Minji and the way that they interact, which kind of makes sense with like Minji being in that like leadership role. And as a performer, she did help write the song New Jeans. And overall, I just, I'm obsessed with her voice. I love it. It is so pretty. And fun facts about her, she has a younger sister. She used to play a pansori, which is basically like a drummer and a singer performing traditional Korean music. And just very storytelling is like the whole premise behind that. And she was nicknamed Voice Fairy. And she really loves bright colors and flowery scents and has the habit of spraying a fragrance before sleeping since it comforts her and just like have it. It's nice to go to bed with like a refreshing scent. That's something I relate to. I, I do love that, that all the time. That's just like the biggest girl energy. And I say that in the most <laughs> endearing way. Like I love that about women. Uh-huh. <laughs> so like their sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that is very endearing of her. And on the phoning app, she is a member of the debate club. And if she had to listen to one K-pop song for the rest of her life, she'd choose Chunga's Roller Coaster. And she's also currently an ambassador for Dior. Every member so far is an ambassador for a huge yep. company. And it's not like just small. These are big luxury brands. Yes. Last but not least, we are going to move on to Heian. She was born April 21st of 2008, which makes her 15. 15, like literally right now. Like That's... this girl debuted at 14. That is so... This is insane to me. She's 11 years younger than me. 11. Which like, I'm a side note here real quick. People are probably like, oh, like that's creepy. People do say that. Like it's 
weird or creepy to stand or enjoy a group that is so much younger than you. Age is just a number. If you like the music, you like the music. There's nothing wrong you with it. You like, don't have to make it creepy. Yeah, like if you're older and you're into some younger groups, don't feel bad about it. You enjoy their music because they're talented. Like, just enjoy it. That's okay. all. Baby rant. Which I also was feel like it was very mind-boggling to us to find out that she was the youngest member. She is the maknae of the group. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't necessarily look like the youngest member. No, whenever I was first getting into them, and like, I, again, like, I know you had struggled with their names, and like, by that point, I had them down, which was like helpful for us, but whenever I was learning their names, I would just like constantly get a few of them confused, but I kept thinking she was older every time. I was like, oh, she's like one of the oldest. She, I mean, she is taller, so like that, just for whatever reason, mentally, is like, oh, you're older, (laughs) but I don't know, like her face just has a little more mature features than some of the other members. Yeah. And she looks a little bit like Heron, which is also hard because Heron and Hagen, very similar yeah. names. So if you are trying to pick out Hagen, she has big eyes and like fuller lips. And then again, like we said, she is the tallest member if you're like looking at them all together. Like I would just say like really focus on like everything being big, height, big eyes, lips. And like, I would even say she has a really big, like big teeth, like a big smile. Yeah. Personality-wise, Han is very energetic and jokes around a lot. And she is the youngest, but she's gotten more mature lately. I feel like they've all had to mature very quickly, honestly. Yeah. Especially when, like, they're working with like, these big brands. Like, you do kind of just have to mature quickly, even though, like, your brand is also very much youthful. Like, yeah. they, they do a great balance of the two. They do. She's also the most relatable fangirl. Like, I feel like all of New Jeans just feels very relatable in general. They just yeah, they feel do. like fans, you know? But she has BTS albums and has, like, larger photos of Young and Yoongi in her room. And she's, like, done little vlogs in the past, like, when she was really younger. And, like, it's just really, really cute. Very relatable. Performer-wise, she is a very strong vocalist. And honestly, just, like, extremely impressive, especially considering the fact that she's 15. Yeah. Like, I feel like we were watching their music videos the other day, and it's just constantly like, wow, she is so talented all mm-hmm. around. That's wild. What was I doing when I was 15? Not that. <laughs> Not at all. Some fun facts about Hayen is that she does have an older brother and an older sister. They were born in 2003 and 2005. And that ages me so much. Like, the fact that her older siblings are that much younger than me, crazy. My brother was born in 2003. Yeah. I mean, but that's not much younger than you, though. No. It is just wild, though. Let's... Anyway. Her favorite fruit is a strawberry. And on the phoning app, she is a member of the Random Talking Club. (laughs) Again, I feel like this girl is just a fangirl. She loves Harry Potter, has over 15 books in both Korean and English, and a wand. So come hang out at Universal. Yes. (laughs) And she was part of a kid girl group, Uso Girl, under the stage name Yujong. She also appeared on Pocket TV Kid Channel and In Play With Me co-ed group. She was also on the EBS children's show Bonihani in Six Dance co-ed dance group. She was also childhood friends with Classy's Ryun and Rora from Baby Monster from Uso Girl. Han also started modeling at age eight. So many of these girls started stuff at such a young age. I mean, they still are so young. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. <laughs> she is also an ambassador like the other girls. She is an ambassador for Louis Vuitton, which is the youngest to do so at age 14. Insane. Again, 14, it's when she debuted. Yeah. Like, in the <laughs> instant, what connections? I mean, I know we're under high, but like these connections they're intense. we're having to immediately debut a group and then have all these brand deals and partnerships. Crazy. We're going to take a small break and remind you that if you're enjoying this episode so far, make sure to follow the podcast and turn on notifications to make sure you never miss an upload in the future. And if you'd like to show some love, feel free to give us a rating as well. We'd really appreciate it. So getting into their post debut, they debuted with the EP New Jeans with the title track Attention, which sold over 1 million copies, becoming the best selling debut album by a K-pop female act in South Korea. Trendsetters. They are honestly paving ways for fifth gen. Honestly. I know that's a bold statement, but like, it's true. And within their first year, Attention was their first number one song on South Korea's Circle Digital Chart. And the first single album, OMG, featuring OMG and Ditto, was the longest running number one song on Circle Digital Chart and their first entry on Billboard Hot 100 and UK Singles Chart. So they're like big everywhere. It's not just South Korea. And not one full year later, 
they held their first sold out fan meeting bunnies camp at the South Korea Olympic handball gymnasium. An Olympic gymnasium they sold out? Sold out. Not even one full year after. It's crazy. And on top of that, they performed at Lollapalooza, which is was their first performance in the U.S. But they were also like, to get into Lollapalooza, that's like a big deal. It is. And also, I just want to know that the fan meeting name Bunny Camp. That's really I could cute. sob. <laughs> and for awards and recognition, they received Time's Next Generation Leaders and Forbes Korea Powerful Celebrity 40. They were also in the Guinness World Records 2023 for the fastest K-pop act to reach 1 billion streams on Spotify. 1 billion streams on Spotify in the Guinness World Record book. That's literally blows my mind. And they received Rookie of the Year at 2022 Asia Artist Awards and the 2023 Golden Disc Awards, Soul Music Awards, and Korean Music Awards. So, yeah. Everything. They obviously were the Rookie of the Year. Yeah, very obviously. <laughs> they also won Performance of the Year 2022 at the Asia Artist Awards. And they got Digital Song Bonsung in 2023 Golden Disc Awards. They also received the Best New Artist and Top 10 Artists at 2022 Melanin Music Awards and the New Leader Award at 2022 The Fact Music Awards. And they were called a mega blue chip in the advertising industry, earning 10 billion won by April 2023. So that's what, eight months after their debut? That is insane. Like, if you don't know what the mega blue chip is, I'm not 100% sure what this is either, but it basically means that they're one of, like, they have a huge net worth. And again, just like 10 billion won, like that is just- So in reference for the 10 billion won, that's $7.5 million US. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> They've also had some really, really amazing collaborations, including Coca-Cola, where they were able to promote Coke Zero Sugar with the song Zero. And they also released Be Who You Are a month later. And some of the coolest collaborations they've had have come from this most recent EP, Get Up, with Apple. Their entire like music video, for the most part, like was shot with an iPhone. Yeah, I mean, and like ETA, that like little clip of the song was literally promoted on, I swear, every YouTube video that we watched mm -hmm. for a solid month. And I think we saw the ad before we saw the music video yeah, we released. Did. And so we saw the ad, we're like, wait, what is this? And so we immediately watched it. So cool. And they also recently partnered with Powerpuff Girls for their song, New Jeans. That's just the most iconic it was so collaboration. Cool. Yeah. Like the Powerpuff Girls are like something that's so timeless for us. And like, that's their whole vibe. Like that's, it's just so, such a cool collab. They also partnered with McDonald's Korea. They had a meal and a standee and they've partnered with a bunch of other technology and clothing brands. It's just crazy because they only have 13 songs yet they have this big of an impact. Not just like, I don't know, like you feel like there's like an impact with different K-pop groups in like a generation. Like this goes beyond their generation, beyond just K-pop and their country. Like this yeah. is insane. Briefly talking about their lore, again, we'll probably get more into this when we start our lore series, but their lore kind of focuses around this like creepy dead classmate. You can specifically <laughs> see this in Ditto and OMG. So even though we have already very blatantly listed how much of an impact they've been having on the industry, let's talk about even more of an impact that they've had with their songs. Some of their most iconic songs are Attention and Hype Boy, which came from their first EP. And then they had Ditto and OMG, which were singles. And honestly, just every song that they release seems to go viral. Honestly, and we were watching, I was trying to think, what did we watch on YouTube where it was the, it was the most viewed stages of like the month. I think oh, comeback yeah. stages or just stages in general. And majority of them were new jeans. Even if it was the same song, it was like a different stage and it was just like the most viewed. Like it's crazy how viral they are. Both idols and fans upload dance challenges to their songs. And they're a group that really just makes both happy and smile regardless, like whether they're the fan or the idol which is really cool. Like, you know, like idols do a bunch of other groups dance challenges, but like just like the happiness that radiates yeah. off everyone who does. Like people love jeans, doing their crazy. dance challenges. Yeah. <laughs> Fashion wise, they are very into the hats with ears. Those are very popular right now. And I feel like they definitely helped make them popular to be completely honest. And they also have a lot of backpacks. And I think they're just very well known for their concepts. You can kind of see like other groups like fall in their lead. Like you can kind of relate it similar to Triple S Generation. I feel like the, the feeling people had with that song is similar to what they have with New Jeans. And occasionally groups will do this kind of like Y2K nostalgic concept, but they'll do it for like one song and then never really return to it. Whereas New Jeans, they've like made this their entire brand so that if any group does this concept, 
everyone automatically thinks of new jeans, which is really cool to kind of set yourself in this very niche concept Sound? wise. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's very smart of them marketing wise, to be honest. And they just have the coolest storytelling, in my opinion. One of their most recent songs, Cool With You, Jung Hoyeon, which some of you may know from Squid Game, played Eros, who ends up abandoning her status and duties of a god and chooses love. And new jeans are seen looking over her throughout the video and kind of appearing as her guardian angels. And though she brings couples together, she kind of like ends up, oh, I want to be loved and I want to have this relationship. And there's a scene where she's like smiling up to the rain that's falling on her since God's become human when rained on. She falls for this man who's standing beside her in the museum. And that's like kind of why she like fully ditches her duties. And Tony Leung, who you might know from Shang-Chi, but he's also a very famous Chinese actor. He was believed to be another God who interferes with her little storyline. And she makes eye contact with him, realizes who he is. And before she can like run away and escape with her man, he basically puts this spell or curse on them. And that's why he literally instantly forgets that she exists, even though she's sitting right beside him and falls for someone else. Like he Whoa. like messed up her love life, which is so upsetting. Oh my gosh. But like the war. That's yeah. so, so it, it was very different music video from what we usually get from New Jeans, but I loved it so much. Like the girls weren't even really in the forefront of it, just her voices with these like other big actors in it. Like it was just really Can we nice. get a full drama? Because that sounds amazing. Their most recent release was their second EP called Get Up, which featured New Jeans, which is where we had the Powerpuff Girls collab. Love that. They also had Super Shy, which had very fun choreography. It also featured ETA, Cool With You, Get Up, and ASAP, which ASAP was a very beautiful song with their vocals, very unique music video style. Honestly, like excited to see, again, like we kind of said nonstop that they are trendsetters. So it's, it'll be interesting to see after like this comeback what the trends will be like with TikToks and Reels, like editing wise, that kind of maybe stylized after this music video. Yeah, very true. Overall, I feel like every single song on this album went viral. So as like little story time, I guess you could say as bunnies, me personally, I call it kind of like creepy jeans instead of new <laughs> jeans. I live for their like creep factor that they have in some of their music videos and I really want more of them. So in ditto there is a character bon hisu who's from ditto and lightly nodded to in omg the coolest marketing strategy ever they made a secret youtube channel that they did not promote at all they made a secret channel of bon hisu with behind the scenes style videos of the girls and other b-roll just from that ditto era that they had and so it's like going around the school campus, showing the girls, like recording them. And all of the videos were dated in 1998. And they all led up to the music video that they were working on. And so at the end, the last video that was uploaded by her was her version of the music video. Which is why we had, oh, uh, that makes sense. Because yeah. we had multiple versions of the music mm -hmm. video. When we first watched it, we were very confused. Yeah, because they have sense. like side A and side B. And then there's hers. Like, so it's like three. Interesting. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. I feel like it's a cool way to have behind the scenes of a music video and also follow the storyline. It might call it creepy jeans. It's like a lot of it felt very unnerving, like the walking around and like being very like still and silent. Like it was creepy. Yeah. Well, I remember even like the music video, it feels like they were being watched by yeah. someone. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then people theorized that she was representing fans recording them. Like they're not there in the end because they're not actually in our lives. Kind of like that parasocial relationship. Oh. And furthering that theory, the name Bonnie Sue, if you get rid of Sue, Bonnie sounds like bunny. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I love the multiple meanings mm -hmm. like that it could have. And in OMG, her name was written on a note. And in one scene, all the girls disappear, just like leaving one girl sitting in the back dark corner. And like people theorize that it's her, which is just, I, I just love this lore of like this Bonnie creepy, Sue. Like, yeah. Bonnie Sue, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like Music Bank, they upload videos, their comeback stages. And they even have like fan cams of like specific members. Well, they also, Music Bank themselves did a Bonnie Sue version of Ditto to where it was from the ground. Like, you know, when you do a fan cam, it's very straight on from the cam that's like in the sky. This was done on a lower quality camera from the floor looking up at no them. It's way. sick. That just gave me chills. <laughs> it's it's so, so good. Cool. I had to show you when we're done with this, but it was, it was amazing. But yeah, I mean, I feel like I did kind of go deep into this, but I didn't really want to because like, <laughs> we'll, we'll do eventually... an entire lore series, yeah. especially when they come out with more stuff. 
yeah, we'll eventually do more lore, but I just kind of like wanted to briefly, kind of not briefly, talk about it because I'm, just, I'm obsessed yeah, with it. Yeah, that is so cool. And of course, we have to talk about fan wars. Now, we do not condone fan wars. We are multi stands, and no idol wants their fans fighting. So don't be the ass and passionate when standing up for your group. We are just bringing these up so that you know what to possibly expect if you're looking up their history. So one fan war that happened was with Baymon, which is Baby Monsters fandom. It was that very classic, like, my group is better than yours mentality. And it started before Baby Monsters debut. And they ended up roping Blinks into it, like Blackpink's fandom, and saying that they support Baby Monster and trying to compare support numbers for both groups and, like, prove that Baby Monster will beat New Jeans. And, like, it was just... The most petty. It was just too much. Yeah, it was just. It like, was I, a lot. That like always naturally comes when you're like into groups and they have another group that's around their age or just debuted, but right. stop. <laughs> Get help. Get some house. <laughs> <laughs> and another fan war that happened that you may see around the internet was the fan war with Blinks, which is Blackpink's fandom. They were basically fighting for the top position for girl groups, which I honestly saw this one coming just because with New Jeans very quick rise to popularity and Blackpink being the top of girl groups in K-pop. I feel like that's bound to happen, but Blink sent hate when the girls got ambassadorships and then bunnies were sending hate to like random pictures that Lisa had posted. It was just, you just, know, kind of- Just a lot of back and forth that's unnecessary. Which is usually what fan wars are, but yeah. now you know, just in case you happen to see these floating around somewhere. So I think that kind of wraps up this group chat about new jeans. Absolutely love this group. Like I just got, I really found like a love for them as we were doing this deep dive, which is mm -hmm. honestly what we knew it was going to happen when we were doing yeah. these group chats. Like we knew we were going to fall for the group. So we ended up doing this on, but they're just some really amazing and talented girls. And I really recommend that you look into them more, but hopefully this was some good information to give you kind of the first little start of becoming a bunny. Now in leaving, we are going to do our favorite song from new jeans. I feel like this is really hard to do because yeah. like we said, every single song is viral. Yeah, like there's only 13 of them, but they're all viral. They're all good. <laughs> um, but I ended up choosing Cool With You. I just, the sound the of that was so beautiful. I do tend to lean towards a certain sound with K-pop. And though I do love their other songs, like I feel like that's the closest to the usual sound that I lean towards. Yeah, I totally get that. I kind of feel the same way. I chose ETA, which is kind of funny because when I first watched this music video, I wasn't like uber impressed with it. Like I liked it. I knew it was catchy and I'm like, oh, the dance challenges coming from this are gonna be amazing. But then after hearing that YouTube ad a hundred times, uh, it really grew on me and now it's constantly in my brain. <laughs> I'm like, what's your ETA? Yeah, constantly. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna choose for this one. And some content that we recommend you look into if you want to know more is definitely that Ditto and OMG lore with Bonhisu and all of that like behind the scenes stuff that we were talking about. And just honestly recommending any of their like vlog type videos as well with each of the members and their like online variety show Jean Zine it is so cute. They just do a bunch of different activities on the show and it's a good way to get to know the girls like personalities. I'm definitely looking forward to like watching more of those. If you want to contribute to some of our podcast segments or interact with the podcast more in general, you can definitely head over to our Patreon at The Lunapod. We also do reaction videos over there. We do have our first reaction videos up now where we reacted to some new music videos, including XG, Mamamoo, Everglow, the new NCT and NCTU music videos. It was so much fun and you will definitely love it. So if you wanna watch those videos, head over to Patreon. As always, you can find us on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube at The Luna Pod, and on Instagram at The Luna Podcast for up to date information on episode releases and behind the scenes fun. We post all sorts of content, so definitely make sure to follow us and check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye. Oh my gosh, I saw this video and I think it was uh, Minji and Hani, I believe. Mm. And it was just this video that someone panned the camera over and they weren't like supposed to be recording and they were like linking their little binky bongs together. Like you turn one and the other one, they fit perfectly mm -hmm. together, the little ears. And they were like linking them together, like this little power move and then saw the camera was on and like freaked out, were so embarrassed. And I'm like, that is the cutest thing ever. And I want to like blinky bong connect with everyone now. I need to get, we need to get their light stick. I've just decided. Don't we were tell thinking me about it. Okay, but if I get my binky bong, what croc giblets do I get? Croc giblets. <laughs> <laughs> Whose name do I get? I need to decide my bias so I can I like figure the it out. I like the original ones, to be completely honest. Um, okay, cute. so uh, see you at our K-pop store. We're about to go get a new light stick. <laughs>